Well, thanks ever so much, Mark and Paul, for joining another uh, edition of FGS TV. I hope uh, we've well, got quite a few viewers today, so that's all we're good. And I'm not even counting the ones on YouTube. So I'm going to try and keep it upbeat, lively, informative and insightful. Um, that's the way we like to do it. So firstly, I'd like to introduce Mark Armstrong, who's VP of Sales for the whole of the UK for HPE. Hewlett Packard Enterprise, but I'm sure you all know that. And Good Paul Stanley. So, Mark and I go back, uh, well, probably 20 years. Not go back in that way, but we go back. You know, we've I don't know each how other. old do I think? You, well, probably not. No, probably longer than that. Yeah, it would have been in the, in the 90s, so quite a yeah. while. Uh, and Paul, uh, not though for so as long, five years or so. And he's New the, youngster. Yeah, absolutely. Whippersnapper. He's the UK uh, Channel Sales Manager. HPE, so looks after all the partners, and so suggest well, quite a big percentage goes through the channel uh, from HPE. So, today, the subject we picked is really around cloud hybrid cloud, what's going on, how people are buying equipment, how people are utilizing the cloud, or on prem cloud, whatever you want to call it, because everything's called cloud now. Uh, but before we go into that, how are you finding it all at the moment? Because it's a bit different. I know you've had this conversation probably a thousand times, but it's starting to change to me. So I think we're almost getting back into a normal. Yeah. What do you think, Mark? I mean, Go with that. Yeah, I mean, from a from a broad UK perspective, um, you know, how has it been? It's been it's been sort of up and down, right? The first couple of months were very strong for us, um, as we got a lot of COVID-led demand for um, use cases like VDI, um, you know, a lot of demand from public sector, um, and a lot of, I think a lot of big organizations pulled business forward in order to secure um, supply. Um, we were then hit with a, ch a, a, a su supply challenge. Um, and then I think we were hit with a period of time where a lot of employees um, in the IT industry had been furloughed, um, had been at home, um, and I think that led to a couple of tough months, um, actually, um, in the mid in the mid midsummer. Um, we're coming out of that now. Um, demands looking much stronger for our Q4. Um, yeah. Projects are coming back live again. We're seeing greater interest in um, in spend in digitalization projects. Um, you know, I think there's a realization now more than ever of how core technology is to enabling businesses to be successful and government government to be to be successful um and um you know it's the heart of a lot of a lot of organization strategy so um you know i think things are looking up we're looking forward to um, a strong close to our fiscal year yeah we're seeing we've been really lucky as i've said before people have heard this before be lucky because we're in the banking and finance industry uh and in the i gaming hashtag gambling Sorry, the cat wants to go out of the room. Sorry about this, guys. Yeah, and it was going to be how until it stops. There you go. There you go. Yeah. What's your cat's uh, name, Pete? Pardon? What's your cat's name? Louis. Louis, the cat. Yeah, which happens to be my <laughs> daughter's boyfriend's name as well. So right, okay. it doesn't get confusing. Um, they look different. And so, yeah, but we've found it. We've been really fortuitous. And I think it's more luck than judgment that we're in those sort of industries. But we've yeah. seen a lot of changes how people want to do stuff as well. You know, we, uh, there's a lot of cost out there. People are saying they need to save cost, they need to save cost. So they're really scrutinising. And so where yeah. it was, are we going to get more cloud? We're going to get more cloud. We're seeing a lot more people discussing the on-prem. Um, but they still want to pay for it like cloud, which we'll come on to in a sec. But yeah. In, yeah. But in general... Well, we're going back to the office tomorrow, but only because we've got a new starter, yeah? So we've got to do the inductions, we've got to do the cultural stuff and all of this. So it'll be the first time the office has been utilised since March. Are you, taking, um, are you taking any COVID precautions, Pete, in the office? Are you um, you doing a bit of social distancing? Are, are, are we taking that hydrochloride or whatever? Is that what you mean? <laughs> that Donald Trump takes? No, um, yeah. Well, we've got a big enough office. There's only five of us going in. 
Yeah. So we've been up there. I've been up there every two or three weeks. But so, yeah, we've got the hand sanitizers and all that sort of thing. But we're not going to be going there. We're only going to go there for a couple of days. And I'm only going there today. I think that that office, in two years down the line, we'll still be in the same situation where we might be going in once a week or once a fortnight. I don't think it's going to change too much. It's quite an interesting one because when you said how are things going, and obviously we've got the business on the business side, within HP, um, it's quite interesting because we've adapted, I think, quite well to a different. You've disappeared, Paul. It's, um, it's a, up to 20% is our maximum occupancy, and obviously with, with a lot of the COVID, yeah. social distancing and PPE protection, etc. Um, but the interesting thing is, um, is in the job that we do, it's a very people-focused business. Yeah. So we found that it's really interesting that, like, so for example, I manage people, and there's a real interesting change in how you keep people motivated without actually physically seeing them, because we're used to going in the office, creating a buzz, you know, get, 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 get interacting with partners and customers. You know, that's what we do. It's a very physical yeah. people business. Um, and so what we're finding now is some real, it's a, just, a, just a different way of interacting. And uh, it's, always, it's always a bit like, I don't know if you remember when um, text messages first came out and people started communicating on text. So yeah, you got afraid, Paul. Oh, mate, yeah. Well, when that yeah. happened, <laughs> it's funny because you, you could quite easily put your foot in it by not actually communicating in the right way or what you thought you yeah. were saying, somebody else interpreted in a different way. And I think without personal interaction and, you know, things like body language, we're finding where we are interacting with people, you've still got, you've got to really think about what you say, how you say it, and also you, you've got to read reactions in a different way. So it's a different spin on things, but it's also trying to, trying to make sure that your team are motivated, and normally you can tell those sorts of things when you're yeah. face-to-face with people. I don't know if you found that, Mark, but it's just, just a slightly different in terms of interacting on the people front. No, definitely. It's a, li- it's a little different, but it's, it's still actually, you know, remarkably effective um, communicating yeah. over things like Zoom. And you, when you think about the amount of meetings that you can have with customers and partners in a day in comparison yeah. to physically traveling, I think it's, it's brilliant. I mean, um, you know, we had our customer outreach day last week where we, we outreached to about 6,000 customers across our sales team. Personally, I had um, nine customer engagements in one day i mean that's just not feasible uh, yeah. in the physical world so um there's a lot of benefits to working like this and i yeah. think we've got to keep the benefits um i agree with you completely about in, in <coughs> personal interaction um yeah. and that won't that, but that, that won't that won't end but i think mm. um, we'll we'll be seeing less in the office than we yeah. than we were and so interesting that even though even though we're more productive we're definitely not less busy are we <laughs> That's true. It's like phenomenally true. busy, which is great. And it's, it's yeah. good busy as well. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the difficulty I'm finding, and I found it really, I've really enjoyed it. My wife's really enjoyed it. Mm. Uh, it and she doesn't want ever to come out of lockdown. Yeah. So she, it's, it's been great. And fortunately, we get on all right, which helps, obviously, when you're married. Uh, but the bit that we've found challenging in business it, and I've only just worked this one out in the last few weeks, actually. We're doing a lot more Zoom meetings. We're, you know, our sales guys have got to only do two appointments. Okay. Of, not a lot, but now they can do two in the morning quite easily. Yeah. But when you go out with people, you go and see them face to face and have a chat and have a coffee. You talk about everything. You'll find out more what's going on in their business. That is the bit I'm missing a bit because I'm doing Zoom calls. We're doing, but it's about specifics, usually. The Zoom call regarding a synergy project or a zoom call regarding security it's mm. about something specific there might be three of those and that's the bit i'm missing and obviously being such a funny guy as, as i am yeah and uh, <laughs> yeah as we all are gents i miss that bit and then get the relationship going thing, Pete, you're talking about being able to develop that relationship through personality is that the bit yeah well no it, well yeah to an extent but when you chat to people you have a dinner or you're having a beer or mm. or whatever you may be doing you generally chat, and they say, oh, such and such is doing this, and such and such is doing that. And, you can, and then you find out what's going on in someone's businesses and what's important to their business instead of that specific project. And so to get that just general conversation and understanding their business is more difficult now, we're finding. So we're having to learn ways to do that. 
because <coughs> they get benefits, you get benefits, but you sort of all have progressed into project by project by project. So I feel, I feel as though I've become more reactive as an individual, although I'm communicating a lot more. There's a bit of a paradox there, but that's how I'm seeing mm. it. So I, that's the only side I'm missing. I'm also missing going to Malta. I've not been to Malta since March, and I was doing it every three weeks, you know, for a week at a time. And I've got some great friends there. Really enjoy it there. Um, and I'm missing that, to be honest. I didn't realise what a big part of my life that was. Mm. Um, and so that's challenging. You know, don't get me wrong, I'll get over that. Uh, mm. But fortunately, business has good. And clearly, there's no expenses to pay in the business either. Because yeah. no one's taken anybody out. And so the cost of running the business has come down tremendously. You know, be, be the sort of business we are, we're in the city, we're in Malta, we're moving mm. around a lot, seeing a lot of people. It's, but that's come down, the cost come down, but you've got to trust people as well. People who work for you, and that's the big one. Who yeah, do you it trust? In the, the future of real estate in big cities, isn't it, I guess, that's uh, where you're probably alluding to there. I think the city itself, where we are, I can see in just a few years' time, 50% being um, <coughs> residential. And where would you prefer to live, Docklands or the city? I know where I prefer to live, where the history is. You can always walk to the West End because you know, we've got clients who've got eight floors, for example, at King William Street, right next to Bank. They said they're going to probably get one floor open. Yeah. So the city's got to change. Yeah. It's interesting, yeah. See what, you know, what, what level of return to physical offices, particularly in the city, um, that would be an interesting one. I think, yeah, different views on that. But, uh, yeah. Uh, though, though I would miss, if I was a 20-year-old, working up in London, first, you know, just working in London, got a bit of cash, going out in the evening, what the city's about. Well, having to work from home as a 20-year-old, that must be tough. And so, yeah. you know, some of our staff are that sort of age. And I've got to work out, actually, you're working from home, and, yeah, you're saving your money coming into work. <coughs> But actually, that interaction after work, I think, is quite important for these for these guys as well, these girls, to be able to go out. And so that must hit your teams as well, because you've got some younger people in your teams, we know. Yeah, definitely. And you know, we, you know, that we would prioritise probably that kind of cohort to come back into the office as soon as we as soon as we can, and uh, yeah. you know, all sorts of challenges that we wouldn't think about of, you know, working in a shared house and. Mm. things like yeah. that makes life I makes think we've done a great, great job Mark at HP haven't we in terms of recognising that there's lots of guidance and coaching around you know, working from home and making sure you look after the best interests of your people yeah. um, you know we've even got things like sort of a meditation half an hour a week just to chill out and make sure you do something and you know, all sorts of um, stuff going on but it's just generally to, to look after people's well-being uh, particularly in, in the current climate and like you say some of the younger ones you know a bit, can be a bit challenged you know, living at home with their parents, potentially, you know, doing their Zoom calls from their bedroom, you know, making sure they have to tide it up before they get on camera, you know. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine living in a, a one-bedroom flat or mm. a studio flat with your, your husband or your wife or your partner, whoever, yeah. and they're working from home, you're working from home. That must be challenging. Or you've got a, and you've got a, a three-year-old baby. We're fortunate. We've got, mm. I'm sure you've both got gardens, yeah? And you've yeah. got space in the house. We're I, very, very fortunate. I think most most people, certainly my interactions with um, with partners and customers on uh, on calls, is it is almost like an acceptance now that you know the doorbell may go, the dog may yeah. bark, the baby may cry, I need to go and do. And we're all, you know, I, I think before COVID, there was probably a little bit of a hmm, you know, working from home is not a good thing. But because it's been forced, yeah. everyone just you just accept it. It's really good. It's a bit like you just kicking the cat out, Pete. <laughs> yeah, you know? not 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 physically. Yeah. No, not physically. I, no. I gave no. it a nudge. Yeah, <laughs> just a nudge. Yeah. But we still carried on, <laughs> and we still got on with it. So it was good. Yeah. <laughs> but to, to move the subject, so mm. Mm. I'm just going to keep up going on that one more. Yeah. One of my really good friends is moving to North Devon. Works in the city. Got a good job. He's now saying he knows. Speaking to his bosses, <coughs> he can do that. He said, "I'll be get the train." He goes from Barnsville or Exeter, I can't remember what he said, once every fortnight, once every three weeks. I get up early once every three weeks. I'm going to go and live by the coast. And I can see that. Not for, I'm not doing it, but for him, 
what a great thing to be able to do. Yeah. And so maybe it's going to keep the house prices reasonably reasonable on the extremities because exactly. you can live there now. Yeah. That's a great thing, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, right, just to go back into the industry here, what are you seeing with the cloud side of things? Because we're getting mixed messages everywhere. You know, I read things in CRN and they say, oh, everyone's going cloud, they've done a survey. And you read this, and for 15 years, cloud everything, cloud everything. A real talk cloud. We're not seeing it as big as I'm reading it. And I'm actually seeing some inverses in that as well. So what, what are you seeing? What, what are you seeing playing out within your client base and within the partners? What are you seeing, Mark? Well, I mean, look, I mean, cloud is, 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 is here to stay, right? And that's yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's not, that's, that, that's very, that's very clear. We, we believe in that. We believe um, that customers um, will choose a hybrid um, um, cloud strategy. You know, ultimately at the top of it all, you know, m the majority of our customers are digitally transforming and modernizing their environments, yeah. um, their applications, um, the consumer is demanding, you know, faster and faster service. Um, organizations are gaining competitive advantage by being, you know, agile. Um, only the fast survive. You know, that, that 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 that's kind of kind of kind of where where the market is moving to. And to do that, you need to have. I think you need to have an agile I, 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 IS strategy mm -hmm. and architecture. Um, and you know, one that's um, one that's delivered as a service. Ultimately, yeah, where yeah. that's delivered, where that where that service is delivered from, is really, I think, dependent on a whole bunch of factors. Um, you know, the nature of the workloads, um, the, um, the you know the latency requirements you might have, the security requirements that you might have. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of things which determine the best place for you to. To, 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 to compute um, now um, you know there's clearly um, certain scenarios where public cloud is, is, is the best place to put um, put workloads but equally there's a lot of scenarios where um, private cloud is the best place to put your workloads um, and actually interestingly you know um, I don't think I don't think I speak to many people that um, use public cloud extensively that would that would um, that would argue with the fact that that actually it's probably more cost effective to use um, private cloud versus public cloud, but public cloud at times gives, you know, great, great benefits. And everyone knows that the, the, um, the, you know, the hire car analogy, you don't hire a car if you're going to use it 98% of the time. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Re it's, it's really good. It's really good for 10% or 15% oh, of the I, I, usage. I, I, I'm going to yeah. that line. I like that. Well, there you go. So, so, yeah, yeah. so, so, we're, so we're seeing we're seeing increasing interest in private cloud yeah. uh, as a service. Equally, you know, alongside that, um, soft, having a software defined strategy and architecture is critical because that delivers the ad, the agility, um, the agile service that customers want. Um, but 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 you know doing it doing it in a in a in a you know in a private data center or in a managed data center um, context um, you know we're seeing increasing increasing interest in and um, you know we've had GreenLake we've had as a service solutions available for a number of years now we've now got more than a thousand customers globally yeah. uh, running GreenLake solutions um, um, and um, more than four billion dollars worth of contracts so it's not it's not like it's new. Um, but I think I think we're seeing we're, we're starting to see um, that that kind of much sharper growth curve that uh, that, that, yeah. that you'd expect uh, you know um, you know after after a time. So can I jump in quickly yeah. for those listening who don't know what Green Lake is? Can you just yeah. explain it? Just you know, elevator pitch yeah, on the Green Lake. So, yeah. so, so you know, so Green Lake is effectively our brand mm -hmm. for. Um, as a service consumption um, mm -hmm. and you know and what we do is we take the technology we take the services we take software we put we put that all together through our partner um, community we wrap a commercial framework around it and we and, and we enable customers to consume and purchase 
uh, for service as opposed to the component tree of product on premise. Where service. On premise. On premise. On right, premise. okay. So it's and almost like purchasing cloud. It, it is. On your own it premise. Is. It yeah. is. And in fact, in fact, you know, we announced at Discover this year, we're moving to, um, you know, the, the next stage we go to, customers will, will be able to literally use HPE.com to provision their own private cloud service. Right, okay. Uh, um, and, um, you know, and, um, and you know, the, and, you know the, the, the capabilities pretty close to us to be able to, to, be able to do that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's effectively a cloud with headroom capacity on premise delivered and charged as you're using it and of course you know a consumption model can 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 move up and move down so yep. as you as if you if you uh, if you reduce consumption spend can come down if you increase consumption spend will go up so you've Key got thing to is an extent that, first capabilities correct there's there's headroom yep. built into the solution which means that yep. you know you can you know you can provision and and again you know one of the one of the one of the big use cases that we've seen um, over the years for public cloud is devops and you know the the ability for yep. devops to you know instantly spin up um um and clusters and and, inf and, and, and compute um, service in public cloud they can do that now in exactly the same way in a private cloud context um, with, with all of the benefits of, 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 of private data center computing as I say you know latency security um, cost etc right nice and so how many clients you got on that so five a thousand over a thousand globally yeah, and, yeah. And, and the fascinating thing is that when customers take take Green Lake services um, they always end up um, using more than than, yeah. than, 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 they, than they set out to, and the and that's because the experience um, uh, is is yeah. so good. Um, and um, you know, um, you know, the other interesting thing as well is clearly, you, you know, a lot of the services provided um, in the background by HPE, which which means you know you free up a lot of your own resources, which are becoming yeah. more and more scarce. To be quite honest to deliver more value than kind of operational management that perhaps they were doing, they were doing before. And clearly as, as our portfolio develops around AI ops and the ability to manage systems remotely using software and, um, and artificial intelligence, the whole capability and cost of managing an infrastructure um, is, is transforming, sure. which clearly we're, you know, we're passing on through the, through the service. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so we we it's delivery. That's all. No, I was just going to say, I always liken it to it's sort of taking that public cloud experience and bringing it into a private cloud, but you get all the benefits of, you know, security, governance, as, as Mark mentioned, um, you know, when, uh, and, and the other thing I think, which um, just, just to mention on that Green Lake is, you know, it is properly metered and you get real time access. So, you know, actually there's, there's an enhancement to GreenLake, which gives you Sorry, a pure... Sorry, you can hear the cat, so I apologise. All right. <laughs> I was going to say, there's, a, there's an enhancement to, um, to GreenLake as well, um, which we call Central, which is really a central pane of glass. It opens up the whole of hybrid cloud. Ah, oh, look at that. Sorry about this, kids. That's all right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> this is the new COVID way yeah, of doing stuff, isn't it? So, yeah. Uh, so I was just, I, yeah, I was just saying that, you know, on, on, as Mark mentioned about our strategies around hybrid cloud and being very open, um, that GreenLake is now developed uh, to an extent. It gives you a, a single pane of glass view yeah. to your whole hybrid cloud. So with integration into Azure, AWS, uh, Google Cloud. So you can actually start to open your eyes and see, especially at a, a, a sort of um, operational yeah. management level, you can start to see and monitor your, your costs and your performance cross not only your own cross private cloud cross, would, yeah, yeah but you can start you can start to see metrics now about other public clouds and, and it, what that does is it gives you the information to be able to, to choose where to about, put it. yeah choose where, where to put yeah. it so it's about workloads as mark said but having the, the the sort of intelligence to know when you when you're developing a new workload or even a workload is is going through its life cycle yeah, yeah. where's the best place for it to go and, and it may be it's private cloud for sure it might be it's public cloud it might be that it's a you know a, an on-prem colo or managed service 
depends where, where it is, but, yeah. but basically the HPE strategy and the technology now through GreenLake and GreenLake Central is suddenly opening your eyes to give all of that data, all that information about making the right choice for workloads um, you know, to, to, to customers, which is, which is brilliant. And obviously, that's all, that's all available through, um, through our partners and you know, key strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, and let's hope, sooner or later, I think it might be more than later, that this will be available in some of the regions where HPFS aren't working, like like the Malta. Mm, we talk yeah, about this yeah. quite a lot, but there, there are a lot of the people we do deal with. Mm. Uh, uh, they're not Maltese as such. They might be Swedish. Mm. Gaming firms tend to be Scandinavian, strangely enough. Why? Yeah. I've, I've no one's ever told me why, but it seems to be Swedish and very very strong. So they'll have that said in Sweden, Amsterdam, all over. So the Maltese thing might not slow it down too much, but it means they can't use it locally. But yeah. uh, we're seeing so many clients just not going to the cloud. It's definitely a hybrid. So they might use some SaaS stuff in the cloud, which as yeah. always with the old IS, ASP model, as I used to call it back in the you know, yeah. early, and it's the right way to go. Uh, but yeah. certain, things, certain things aren't. The key thing for us, I think, is that we're, we're finding that, you know, with certain public cloud providers, you, you can start to see that they're now trying to do the opposite and branch out into data yeah. center, you know, so oh, you know, know, AWS, AWS into data center, well, right? Post, yeah, you've got All the that, same with, yeah. you know, Microsoft is yours, your stack, which is fine, by the way, but I think, you know, a lot of those, uh, if you look at those sort of public cloud providers, they've architected for a centralized solution and actually it's quite a challenge for them to branch out into data center. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. with, um, if you look at it from the flip side, where you're looking at it from the data center out into public cloud, yeah. I think our approach is just to be totally open, recognize that the world will be hybrid, you know, and give a view of that and work with, you yeah. know, yeah. If, if customers have got a, already got strong relationships with public cloud, let's embrace it, let's work with it, but make sure you get the right workload in the right location right. at the right time. Yeah. You know, which yep. we, around things that Mark mentioned, which is, you know, performance, costs, governance, you know, compliancy, all the challenges that typically are d decision factors yep. around, um, you know, where, you, where you're gonna, gonna reside your, um, yep. your data or your workload. Right. Big question, this one, actually. Supply, the supply chain. Obviously, the supply chain pretty much broke with COVID, especially coming out of China, so much coming out of China. No aeroplanes in the air, and. Things are chucked around on commercial aeroplanes, aren't they? You know, uh, so as the supply chain got broke through, throughout, <laughs> so we had some Cisco stuff that took seven months, for example. So HP yeah. obviously had their issues. Everyone had their issues. So yeah. how are we seeing that now? Because I know that um, Antonio Neri said it was all about backlog, backlog, backlog. Yeah. Yeah. How how how's HP finding that now? What? Because the clients obviously always say, when's it going to come? Uh, and I always it's say, it's going to come when it comes. It's getting to normalise. Normal right, okay. Now. Right. Yeah. So, so we, we caught up quite a lot during, during Q3. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty close to, to normal. Right, okay. um, so, yeah, significantly better. Um, you know, not, not to say there are no issues, but the issues there, there are are much, much, much fewer. And the length of time um, is much less severe. Right. Well, okay. So yeah, yeah. Because it because it was hard times. We were doing a lot yeah, of sales, uh, especially in your Q two. Yeah. And, and it and then it wasn't shipping, so it made it quite difficult. So the, the orders looked really good, but actually mm -hmm. the financial side didn't look as good because we weren't invoicing it out. So, uh, but now if that's getting, we, we're seeing it's getting quite a lot better as well. So yeah. Hopefully, yeah. this second wave, if it comes, won't have such a big impact on the supply chain. So it would be really good to see. So uh, I don't think it. I mean, it, it seems it seems that we're all a little bit more robust. Um, yeah. But you know, you can't yeah. you know, be, a, be a brave person to uh, to read the future right now. I think in terms no. of COVID nineteen. Look, it I mean, does feel, it does feel normal. Vaccine soon enough, and then, and then, mm. you know, then things things might change materially. Yeah. Well, so I'm hoping it changes enough that we can do Discover next year, but, but we, I, we don't know. Yeah, I really yeah, like quite. <laughs> yeah, the virtual was great, but not not quite as much fun. It was great, but not as great. There are things that are greater to you, yeah. yeah. If you know what I yeah. mean, yeah. yeah. And uh, with the 
digital marketing and stuff. I do enjoy it, don't get me wrong, but it's uh, it's not quite the same, but it's it's the um, the only conduit we've got, really. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah, I mean, no. there's, there's, one, there's one key benefit of it, and that's reach, you know? Yeah, yeah, mean, yeah we, absolutely, we discover, yeah. We discover we can, you know, we can, we, 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 you know, we see going to Las Vegas, an event that far away, we'll see, um, you know, a few hundred people from the UK attending, whereas, whereas on Discover Virtual, we've got, We've got thousands of customers. Yeah, yeah. So that that one to many is much much better. Than it's, 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 a, it's a breadth as well, Mark, isn't it? Because there's, there's certain stakeholders that we would normally not be able to invite that can come yeah. along and join in. Exactly. You know, so it's great yeah. we've had the, the breadth is is extended, which is good. Yeah. So it's a, it's a pure set of individuals. Selfish thing from us to say hope discover comes on, so we're going to see less people, but we're going to have a great time. As well as learn lots, yeah, get that. But it's, yeah, yeah. I do tell all comes back to that. really hard, yeah. It all comes back to that point we mentioned earlier, Pete, about relationships and, and sort of physical, you know, that physical interaction. Yeah. It's just, um, you know, I guess uh, I guess that's the difference between that virtual and, uh, and the physical yeah. being there. Yeah, and, and I actually really enjoy the HPE relationships, go back to my compact days, yeah. And it's great that so many people have done well, moved up, uh, you know, people like yourself, Mark, and the likes of Paul Hunter and stuff. And these are still people who I know very, very well. And, and I've got a real pride in that. You know, I really enjoy it. And uh, so I do hope we get a discover, even if it's a mini one. Yeah. Showing my age, Paul Hunter, uh, when I joined uh, the company, I, I, uh, Compaq as it was, um, Paul Hunter took me out on my first ever sales call. Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. So I go back a long way with Paul. Did you close the business, expel, Mark? I couldn't even spell computer back at that point. He, he did. Did he do laptop and desktop? Yeah, that's the case. Yeah, yeah, he was Bill Wilson we sold, or someone. We sold everything. We sold everything from a uh, from a uh, you know a laptop to a sand. And printer what cartridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why not? Mark, why not? Mark, did you, Mark, did you close the deal? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, How many do you want? When do you want them? Sorry. So, so, no, no, I wasn't. Being, I, I was just waffling on as I usually do. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to close this up in a second. Just uh, yeah, yeah. So I just, uh, I'm really excited about the future. I, yeah. I'm so am I, and I, yeah. I can't stress. You know, uh, you know, if you if if you're out there and you've not thought uh, about private cloud, um, you know, as a service, you know, mm -hmm. then, then take a look because it does. It does it, it does unlock a lot of opportunity for you to deliver. I think um, yeah. you know really agile service in a very efficient way, and um, and you know and that's, that's ultimately gives again gives you the bandwidth and the room to go do more as well. Yeah. So well, it's a no brainer. Hybrid's the way to go forward. If I get smaller companies who are totally public cloud, but I, I, I can't see the cost benefit corporates being totally public cloud i just can't see it there's a right place no I agree a, a and, and actually, do you know what Pete, while you talk i mean i, I, I again i've got the the, the um on really of, of, of overseeing all of our customer base from the largest customers to the smallest and, and two customers i won't name them but one very very large account um in the finance um industry i mean the amount that they are using green lane now is astounding and the share that we are gaining versus the public cloud share in that in yeah. that in that account is is really fascinating far far, far greater um, percentage usage and then I was talking to a, you know quite a small a pretty small customer um, 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 you know, mid-market customer who's been using GreenLake for a year and do you know what? I mean, I, I could not have had a, I couldn't have had a happier customer on the phone. I mean, they were absolutely delighted with what it was, yeah, what, yeah, it, yeah, what, yeah. It, what it was, what it was doing for them. And they were just increasing it. They were they're, they're bringing bringing on into it um, synergy to give them um, um, much more flexibility around around um, the, the ability to compute. Um, bare metal container and virtualized applications in the same framework, um, and um, and uh, you know Rick, they just absolutely loved it. Um, so watch out for the they'll be uh, they'll be the next public use case, I think, for us.
us. Because the other thing is people assume it's just for the big guys and it, and it, and it isn't. It yeah. really isn't. Mm. No, and it's getting easier to sell now. Very it's much. Easier to sell. Very that, much. That's one of the big, one of the big challenges yeah. with the channel was, was yeah. it, we found it tough. Yeah. I know. Yeah, and and it, I think, I mean, Paul, you correct me, but quick quote, I think we'll turn around, we'll turn around a quote with, um, you know, with a statement of work in, in like a minute. Yeah. distribution yeah so, literally i think it's eight clicks to get a full-blown proposal you know straight out from um, from some of our tools uh, which is which is uh, obviously phenomenal and also um at discover we announced that um, certain workloads that um that were almost sort of reference architecture productizing um that are available in this little as 14 days from click to provision um, so you know, it really is bringing that um, yep. that sort of public cloud experience into uh, into the private cloud data yep. center environment. And I know Pete, your organisation is well equipped, and uh, you know you guys yep. have invested quite heavily anyway. So if anyone's out there listening from a you know from a customer perspective interested, you know I definitely encourage um, you know, speaking to your uh, yeah. sort of teams um, to uh, develop opportunities. Yeah, top man. Well, mm. last one before we go off yeah. and. Uh, and uh, is why on earth would people furlough salespeople in our industry? I don't get it. I just, I just don't get it. I, I, I just find it mind-boggling when the clients most need you and they're still spending. It's not as though they've all stopped. Unless all you did was the red top bus companies or something. I don't know. Then yeah. what? I just, I just, it seems so short-sighted. I got a view on that, Pete. I, I, I think the furlough um, is interesting because you're absolutely right. Demand hasn't gone away. What has happened, though, is that there's a different type of conversation to be had. Yeah. Um, you know, to, to work through, as Mark mentioned earlier, you know, we've seen a lot about, you know, demand for digital transformation and working in different ways yeah. and trying to adapt to, you know, different ways of working. Those conversations have actually challenged some organizations, I believe, yeah. with skill sets. And I think, when they're trying to trying to get into those conversations, there may have been some furloughing around. I don't know whether it's a sales expertise to be able to to sort of deliver the, yeah. the right if level you, of engagement. That, that, just that's my view. Yeah, just doing the old action catalogue and just shipping. Yeah. As yeah. Well as you can't challenge your client. You can client. see, you you can see why. Challenge you can see your client. Why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there's winners and losers in in that. To be honest, in organisations, those that have adapted quickly. Those yeah, agile yeah, yeah. enough to you know to get on the uh, on the front for yeah. the right and relevant conversations of one out. Yeah, we've got it on our wall in the office, which we don't go to yet. Yeah? Uh, we've got challenge written on all four walls. Yeah, you should challenge a client if you give them the spec they've asked for. Feel as though you failed. Yeah, because we we feel as though we know not saying we know better than them. We're not saying they're smarter, but they work for one company. They don't work like we work for say. 40 companies yeah. they all do they'll skin that same cat not you by the way <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll shut its ears yeah uh not skin that sort of but we all skin cats differently and utilizing other people what they're doing and saying how about this such and such or you don't even to the name that's another way of doing it and they've got real benefits that's what we exist for yeah we don't exist, and it's, yeah we don't exist for someone to say how much is that it's it, it's pounds. that's not that, what we're there for and that comes back to, you know, we mentioned earlier about, uh, Mark mentioned about GreenLake, you know, as a consumption solution. You know, it's a different way of buying technology. Um, you're buying it consumption on demand. That's a different conversation. You know, you need to be able to ask those questions, you, you know, dig a bit deeper. You know, I know you were enabled, but um, there you go. <laughs> yeah. well, guys, Yeah. I think we're going to wrap up. I could just talk all day, but I don't yeah. talk. Day, and I know, uh, and I Mark can talk quite a bit, and, and probably yourself, Paul. Yeah, well, a little bit here and there. <laughs> a little bit here and there. So we'll jump off now. Thank you very much indeed, guys. And I will be speaking to you in 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, pleasure. Pleasure. Right, pleasure. I really appreciate you taking your time, and uh, I've really enjoyed it today. Top round. Cheers, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye.